Erev Tov Chavrim, I'm Stephen Benuni. You're watching Israeli News Live. And boy, it's starting to get back a little bit better. Thank you guys for praying for me, those that have been praying. Uh, I need to get right into this. Uh, pray God my voice holds up to do it. President Obama prepares for a biblical war. Now, guys, let me tell you something. There's so much breaking news that, that we are monitoring in Russian language, but what I'm about to share with you is on RT news. But I do have another broadcast be releasing tomorrow about how Russia, actually in their own Russian media, the Russian language there, has recognized that President Barack Obama is going to go to war with Russia because of the collapsing economy in America. That's something many people have been stating for a long time, but actually to see a Russian news source come out and state this in an in-depth article, we'll be looking at this tomorrow, and hopefully I can get also the interview up with Avi Lipkin we did about Russia as well, get this information up for you there. But right now, guys, you're about to see a war now, this war that is fixing to take place being reported on RT News, I want to show the picture right here of RT News, the article here. You guys may not realize this, but this is a biblical fulfillment, a biblical fulfillment of such a magnitude that Revelation's horse riders are actually going to get in motion. I haven't really ever spoke on that before, but this is something that will give you a little clue about who that horse rider really is. And believe me, the first guy is not Yeshua riding the white horse either. That's the Antichrist spirit itself coming on that horse, and you're going to find out a little bit about that tonight. Maybe I can do a more in-depth study on the horse riders for you. U.S. to send 560 more troops to Iraq to retake ISIS stronghold Mosul. All right, this is RT News, July the 11th, 2016. It came out today there. More U.S. troops are on their way to Iraq to aid the country's armed forces in the upcoming offensive against the Islamic State stronghold of Mosul. U.S. Defense Secretary Ash Carter announced during a su surprise visit to the country. Imagine Ash Carter actually going to Iraq. That is a surprise. With these new reinforcements, the U.S. will have about 4,650 troops in Iraq, two years after returning to the country to fight ISIS. If U.S. commanders require more troops, Carter, that's Ash Carter, said he would ask the president for them. A fight in Iraq. Thought we left Iraq. I guess not. Well, you know what? God knows that prophecy has to be fulfilled, and the United States is also a key player in this. In fact, ISIS over there in Mosul was a fulfillment of prophecy as well. Let's take a look at what Mosul is, though, here on the map, guys. And if you can take a look right here in Mosul, and what's right here at the top? Nineveh ruins. We are looking at the ancient biblical city of Nineveh, which is clearly in prophecy, not just from the times of when uh, Jonah got swallowed by the great fish there and spit out, which, by the way, was off the Mediterranean coast. But we know that even in according to the writings there, it was like a three, three or four day journey, I believe it was, all the way to Nineveh, which by foot would have put you right there in northeastern Iraq or northwest Iraq there. So, yes, it is the same biblical city that we read about in the Bible. Um, anyway, I'd like to go into Nineveh itself there in the story of Jonah, but don't have time for that at this point. Anyway, let's take a look at Scripture. Though I said to you this is a biblical proportions of a fulfillment, this war here. Let's see why we say that. Nahum, chapter 2, verse 8, beginning there, going down to verses 12. But Nineveh is old like a pool of water. Yet they shall flee away, stand, stand, shall they cry, but none shall look back. Now, guys, I've already shared with you how that ISIS, the, 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 the war that's been going on, uh, how that ISIS came, they looted out the silver and the gold out of Nineveh. They took the precious furniture. Much of this stuff, the antiques, ended up on eBay. Uh, much of it has ended up in Britain, believe it or not, uh, where this stuff has been sold. But of course, they did steal the gold and the silver in the banks. All of this we brought out to you here on Israeli News Live. Watch what it says there. Take ye the spoil of silver, take the spoil of gold, for there is none end of the store and glory of all the pleasant furniture. 
And it did. It ended up on eBay <laughs> of all places. They have looted it. And of course, RT News has been very thorough in showing how that ISIS has really uh, a very intricate structure, almost as if they were a government. They have ministries of oil. They have ministries of uh, antiquities that deal with the selling and the, uh, of the things that they have looted. But let's watch what happens. Verse 10, she is empty and void and waste. The heart melteth, the knees smite together. Now this is after the first battle. She's empty. In other words, there's no more gold in her. There's no more silver or anything like that. So why then does the United States want to go to war there? They want to retake Mosul. But chapter 3 speaks of the second battle that's going to hit Nineveh. But let's finish here, though. And much pain is in all the loins, and the faces of them all gather blackness. Where is the dwelling of the lions and the feeding place of the young lions? Where the lion, even the old lion, walked and the lions whelp, and none made them afraid. The lion to tear in pieces enough for his whelps, and strangled for his lioness, and filled his holes with prey, and his dens with raven. What is that? That is actually speaking about this battle that ISIS has done in order to take Nineveh, the city today called Mosul. And they have robbed everything. And he's done, and, and it says, what? It's empty now. There's nothing left. Verse 10, she is empty and void and waste. So what's the deal now? What's going to happen next? Well, we go right over into chapter 3. Then something interesting begins to happen. Woe to the bloody city. It is full of lies and robbery. Well, chapter 3 goes into a bloody city. Why? Because it's just full of bloodshed now. Now, I'm going to tell you something, guys. Chapter 3 has a compound fulfillment in it. The U.S. going into battle there to take this city back is one fulfillment, but it also has a compound fulfillment of things as well. So just watch careful. Nineveh is naturally, it's, it's, remember it says over here, it's old uh, like a pool of water right there. But Nineveh is old like a pool of water. Let's us know that we're dealing with an ancient city. And this happens when it's old like a pool of water. All right, she's empty now, she's void. That battle's all done, but guess what? Woe to the bloody city. It's just a, it's full of blood and everything. But now listen, guys, this is a compound fulfillment here. Not only is it speaking about Nineveh that is over in northwest Iraq, but it's also speaking about the United States where the Obama administration, starting under Bush, and how they've gone and they've waged wars for the great whore of Rome. So it is a compound fulfillment. So watch it as we go here. It is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of the whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and the prancing horses and the jumping chariots. All right? Now watch that now. The horseman lifted up both the bright sword and the glittering spear, and there is multitude of slain and great number of carcasses, and there is none end of the corpses that stumble upon their corpses. Now, again, this is speaking of the United States military that's going to go into Nineveh for a second time, but it also speaks about the United States and the wars that she conducts for a particular person or a particular uh, power entity on this earth that she conducts around the world. So again, it is a twofold fulfillment. Because of the multitude of whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. Now see, this is where it identifies right there in Revelation. Because she is a well-favored harlot. Remember that Mystery Babylon is the mother of harlots. And Mystery Babylon is no less than the Roman Catholic Church. All right? But we're going to come back to Nahum 3.3 in just a minute. The horseman lifteth up the bright sword and the glittering spear. 
So something interesting there that's going to really catch your attention about the horse riders of Revelation. Anyway, we go back to verse 5 here. Behold, I am against the, excuse me, uh, uh, verse 4. Uh, because of the whoredoms, okay, she's a well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms. Isn't that interesting? She's well-favored. The United States is well-favored by Rome. But she's also a mistress of witchcrafts and that selleth nations through her whoredom. She goes in there, battles it out, takes it, and the highest bidder gets to take over the country. Now, I'm not speaking about the good, honest believers that are there. In fact, I'm going to share with you a scripture that sets a time frame for the meek of the earth where God is about getting ready to hide them away. We'll go into that in just a moment. All right, now, Behold, I am against thee, saith the Lord of hosts. I will discover thy skirts upon thy face, and I will show the nations thy nakedness and the kingdoms thy shame. I will cast an abominable filth upon thee and make thee vile and will set thee as a gazing stock and shall come to pass that all they that look upon thee shall flee from thee and say, Nineveh is laid waste. Who will bemoan, bemoan her? Whence shall I seek comforters for thee? Again, twofold fulfillment here because when the U.S. goes in there to take Mosul, it's going to be laid waste. But also, the U.S. is going to be laid waste as well as a biblical fulfillment because of her whoredoms that she has done with the Roman Catholic Church. Now, let's get into this part about the horsemen. That's right there in verse 3, Gimel in Hebrew. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear. Hmm. Well, the first two words there is what's very interesting in verse 3. Parash ma'ala. Okay, ma'ala is, is, uh, is, is upon something. Okay, me is, is, uh, is like to get on something. But the parash is the word for a horseman. And it's only one rider, guys. One rider. In other words, parash ma'ala. The horseman has mounted with his bright sword and glittering spear. Now that's my personal translation of that. And that horseman, guys, in my opinion, is no different than the commander-in-chief there of the United Nation forces headed by the well-favored harlot, the United States administration. I want to make sure I say the administration because believe me, there's many good, godly Americans that love Yeshua with all their hearts. And I know that, guys. I know you do. I know you'd love to see the nation turned around, but what's happened is they've given our country over to Rome to rule. Believe it or not, ever since Ronald Reagan became president, that's where it all began because according to Alberto Rivera, the former Jesuit for the Catholic Church, he said that they knew that when the first president that ever faced an obelisk to do his inauguration, that would be when the Catholic Church has conquered the nation. It was Ronald Reagan that did that. And it's no, no surprise, as much as people say they love Ronald Reagan, I don't say he wasn't a decent president. But the problem is, is what did he do? He made an alliance. They called it the Holy Alliance. Time Magazine covered the article, and that's how they collapsed the Soviet Union. Don't think that the Soviet Union hasn't, or Russia hasn't forgot what they did. All right, now, before I go any further, I want to show you something. And this is Pope Francis with United Nations Forces, all right? Let me just show you something. You know, I first started looking for the Pope with American soldiers. You don't get too many, but you do get soldiers that are actually saluting the Pope of Rome. You don't salute a guy unless he's your commander-in-chief. But when I pulled it up with United Nations soldiers or forces, man, has he got his pictures made with them. Everywhere, no matter where you're at. Rome, abroad, everywhere. But all those pictures are controlled. They don't want you touching their pictures with him with his... United Nations force. He's got more pictures made with the UN forces than anywhere else. Just a thought I figured I'd share with you guys. So anyway, let's get right back into this here. I got to jump back down because I kind of jumped out of that. Let's go back to, uh, let's go to Revelation 
uh, chapter 17. I will show unto thee, not the whole verse of verse 1, but I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. Now some believe that that's the United States. Okay, I can agree with that to some degree, but it also represents the Vatican because he is the leader of 1.2 billion Catholics globally on many waters with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. All right, so the guy that is the head guy that sits on many waters is not a king. The United Nations, even though it's a democracy, is still like a kingdom, in other words. So it's therefore, it's not a nation in that case there. This is a world ruler, which would be the Pope of Rome, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. They give their power over unto the beast. Remember how the scripture says that? That's what a United Nations force is. They have, the nations have surrendered their powers over to the Pope of Rome. And the inhabitants of the earth have been drunk with the wine of her fornication. See, it's a her as well. That's the Rome. She considers herself the great mother church. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw the woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet, colored and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornications, which he used there on uh, right there in Jerusalem, there at the tomb of David, just above the tomb of David, to declare himself with his triple crown on to be the king of the earth, the king of Israel, no less. And upon her forehead was a name written, Mystery Babylon, the great mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. All right? So what is it right here? Verse 4, because of the multitude of whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the kings of the earth committed adult uh, fornications, right? All right, this one here is because of the multitude of whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the harlot, the daughter of the Catholic Church. All those denominational churches are the daughters that she made as well as the uh, Islamic faith is one of her daughters. It's just a wayward daughter. But the U.S. churches have come back home to the mother, and that's what makes up the majority of the United States is those harlot churches, see? And she's the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms. Whatever nation they take control of, then it just goes to the highest bidder afterwards. I'm telling you guys, you're watching prophecy be fulfilled. So parash ma'aleh, the horseman has mounted up with his bright sword and glittering spear. And what is he doing? He's going forth to conquer and to conquering and to conquer. Isn't that what the scripture said he would do? Using his UN forces. He's got his eyes on Russia next. But right now he's going to fulfill that scripture there about Nineveh. All right, guys, real quick, I told you I would tell you also another scripture. Uh, dealing with Nineveh that I think you would find interesting. And I believe that's in Zephaniah right here. Now, Ze Zephaniah speaks up in verse 13. You may not see it very well. And he will stretch out his hand against the north and destroy Assyria and will make Nineveh a desolation and dry like a wilderness. Now, just before Nineveh is destroyed like this, let me share with you what God says that's going to happen here. All right. He says here in verse 3 in Zephaniah, Seek ye the Lord, all ye meek of the earth, which have wrought his judgment. Seek righteousness, seek meekness. It may be you shall be hid in the day of the Lord's anger. Okay. Now that doesn't mean that when the United States hits Iraq that there's going to be a hiding of the meek of the earth. Some people say a rapture. I believe that this hiding is going to happen right. Notice because it says, For Gaza shall be forsaken and Ashkelon a desolation. This is when the ministry of the two witnesses begin. Judgment comes out. But it's just interesting that also north and destroy Assyria and will make Nineveh a desolation. So when Nineveh becomes a total desolation, this is the same time frame in which the meek of the earth might very well be hid away. Just something to think about. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Shalom and good evening.